for those of you that don't know me, I am a plant addict to the core, and this addiction has only gotten worse since my discovery of buying plants on Etsy. My eyes were awakened when I got on Etsy and started finding all these things that so many YouTubers had and I wanted. So, who is outside my house? Disregard. So, we're here today because I ordered a rare wish list plant off of Etsy. Now, this is from a nice Etsy shop called Nice Plants Good Pots. I'll have them linked down below. I have never ordered from them before, so this is going to be kind of a first impression. So, let's just get into it. I don't have a box cutter because I'm unprepared, so we're going to use scissors and hope that nothing happens. So I didn't realize my camera had stopped recording, um, but I did get it unwrapped. Uh, this is how it came. Um, it is a philodendron Florida ghost. I'm, st I'm, I'm excited. Uh, this has been a rare plant on my wish list for a long time. Um, I see it all the time on Kaylee Ellen's page and I die every time I see it because I've just been yearning for it. So the condition of the plant, now that it's here, um, it did get shipped to bare root, which the seller did inform me of and it was in the description of the plant on Etsy, so I was totally aware of that ahead of time. Um, the, the leaves are smaller than, than my hand, maybe they look like they're maybe two and a half inches long, so they're not large by any means. They definitely have the potential. This is the beginning of the growing season, and philodendrons have a tendency to just push growth if you give them the conditions that they thrive in. And I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure this baby gets exactly what it wants and needs because A, it was expensive, okay? For this small plant, it was expensive, but worth it. And B, I want it to be that full, full plant. So I'm gonna do whatever I can to get it there. And if you guys have any tips for this specific philodendron, I don't know if this one maybe needs higher light to maintain its beautiful kind of variegation where it comes in white, um, please let me know, I would appreciate it. Um, because it did come bare root, you guys are also gonna get to watch me pot it up. So I'm gonna go and get my potting supplies and I'll be right back. All right, so I got what I need. I got my potting mix. I got my pot, my beautiful new plant and a little bit of mosquito bits because I used to have a fungus gnat infestation. I don't need more, I got it pretty much under control, but I don't wanna repeat. So I still use a little bit of this just as a precaution, but I'll get to that once we get to that step. First things first, I need to put my hair up because if we're getting down and dirty, I can't, can't be doing all this. and I have no idea what it looks like, so hopefully it looks cute. Well, the first things first we're gonna do is put a little bit of our potting mix in the bottom of the pot. Now, a little bit of information on this pot. I also ordered this from Etsy, it arrived a couple of days ago, and it is from a page called The Backyard Forager, I believe, and she has so many pots, but they're all vintage, they're all, one of a kind, so I can't link this specific pot for you guys, but I will link the page because she's got so many beautiful options for you guys to choose from if you want to get a nice vintage pot. It does have a drainage hole, even though it has an attached saucer. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely gonna work. It's fine, it'll be good enough. The drainage hole is large enough that it's gonna drain out and it'll be okay. So we'll start off with some potting mix. Now, just a little information on the potting mix. This is the same potting mix that I use for all of my philodendrons um, and most aeroids actually, which is about a third traditional indoor potting mix. Right now I am using um, miracle Grow, but I do prefer black gold. So whenever I run out of my miracle Grow, I will get that. My dog's over there sneezing up a storm. 
like I'm not trying to record my first video. Rude. <laughs> I love him. Um, are you done? Lay down, bonus. Or at least get on the carpet. I'm gonna wait till he lays down. Okay, so like I was saying, um, it is one third traditional indoor potting mix, and I am using Miracle Brew right now. Um, it is also one third orchid bark. Um, for my orchid bark, I do Miracle Grow, and I actually prefer Miracle Grow because their bark is a lot chunkier. It doesn't feel like I'm just putting like sawdust in in my potting mix. And then I use one third either pumice or perlite. I prefer pumice because perlite tends to rise to the surface. I prefer pumice, and that's what I have today. But if you don't have pumice, you can always use perlite. We're gonna. We're gonna put some of this at the bottom before I put before I put any of the plant in. Put a little, put a small layer at the bottom. This isn't a big pot, and this isn't a plant with a large root system, so it's not like it's going to be a lot of soil. I kind of circle it up a little bit, rough it up, make sure that there's a little bit of space in there for the roots lay the plant in there in a way that I think it'll fit in the soil. Okay, and then I'm just gonna hold it while I get the soil, uh, while I fill up the rest of it. Um, I use a smaller actual, it's an eating spoon. I don't use it as an eating spoon anymore, obviously, because I keep it with my plant supplies. Um, but it's a little bit smaller so I can get around the plant now that it's actually in there. And then I will push the soil down a bit just so the plant will stay in place and not fall over. So now it's standing up on its own, um, but I still want to put a little bit more soil because some of the roots are showing. Um, I try as hard as I can to only cover the roots and not any of the stem or nodes. Okay, put a little, put a, just a dollop of more soil around it just to kind of the all right I think that's all the soil I'm gonna do and then finishing touch is the mosquito bits now for those of you that don't know mosquito bits have something in them that also repel and kill fungus nuts so if I have a full-blown infestation and I'm repotting a plant I'll actually mix this in with the soil that I'm putting in. Um, some people say that's not good. I don't see any reason why not. Um, I've never seen any side effects to doing it. I mean, it's basically the same as just adding perlite. I mean, just little, little tiny soft rocks. So, but since I don't have an infestation, I usually just take some of it and sprinkle it around, um, sprinkle it around the soil top so that it'll get soaked in, so that it'll get soaked in um, when I water it. And since it is bare root and it didn't have any soil for three to four days while it was in the post office, um, I will water it in as soon as I get done here. And then voila, you have the plant, beautiful, ready to go, ready to live its life in my home. I'm so excited. You have no idea how badly I wanted a philodendron Florida ghost. Like I said before, if you guys have any care tips for this plant, anything that makes it different than other philodendrons and what they need for care wise, please leave it in the comments below. If you guys have any video ideas for me, please leave in the comments below. I'm open to suggestions. I'm here for you guys. So please, if you guys want to see anything from me, let me know. I'll be here. I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace out.